Hi, I'm Afrin Rajoy, and in this lecture, I'm going to talk about another topic in diversity and the family. So let's talk about neurodiversity. Neurodiversity in family therapy refers to an approach that recognizes and embraces the diverse uh, neurobiological characteristics and functioning of family members, including those who are neurodivergent. It emphasizes the neurological differences such as autism, ADHD, dyslexia, uh, and other conditions, and are simply part of the natural spectrum of human diversity rather than disorders or deficits to be fixed or normalized. So in the context of family therapy, neurodiversity focuses on understandings, um, you know, understanding, accepting, and supporting the unique strength, needs, uh, and experience of neurodivergent individuals uh, within the family unit. So some important tips and things that we need to remember uh, when we are talking about neurodiversity or diversity in family therapy, um, and you know some some several um, key principles. The first one is acceptance and celebration. So rather than viewing uh, neurodivergent traits as problems to be fixed, neurodiversity in family therapy encourages uh, the acceptance and celebration of the unique strengths and perspectives of neurodivergent individuals. It emphasizes that neurodivergence is a natural and valuable part of human diversity or diversity. Uh, the second one is empowerment and self-advocacy. So family therapy with a neurodiversity perspective supports neurodivergent individuals in developing self-advocacy skills, self-esteem, and empowerment. Therapists work with families to help neurodivergent individuals identify and express their needs, preferences, and strengths, um, encouraging their you know, active participation uh, in decision-making process. The next one is education and awareness. So obviously in family therapy, with a neurodiversity approach, uh, we want to provide psychoeducational or psychoeducation to families about specific um, you know, neurodivergent conditions, uh, their characteristics, and how they may impact the individual's experiences. Um, this education helps family members gain a better understanding of neurodivergent traits, challenges, and strengths, and you know, help them to provide empathy and promoting a supportive family environment. The next principle is communication and collaboration. So therapists, you know, uh, facilitate effective communication among family members and uh, taking into account uh, the diverse ways, <coughs> excuse me, the neurodivergent individuals may communicate. They work, um, you know, as therapists, um, they work and we can work uh, on improving understanding, empathy and collaboration within the family um, and encouraging open dialogue and active listening. Uh, next key principle is individualized support. So neurodiversity in family therapy recognizes that each neurodivergent individual is unique with their own strengths, challenges and needs. And that, you know, we as therapists work collaboratively with families to develop individualized support plans um, that, you know, address the specific needs of each family member, promoting their well-being and success. Um, and the last principle is reducing stigma and shame. So we want to create a brave and non-judgmental space where family members can openly discuss their experiences and challenges related to neurodiversity by, um, you know, reducing the stigma and shame, um, you know, we as a therapist and also ter therapy itself help individuals and families develop a positive and accepting attitude towards, uh, you know, neurodivergent traits and conditions. So um, when we talk about kind of like neurodiversity perspective in family therapy, we want to create an inclusive, uh, brave, supportive and empowering environment that recognizes and values the diverse uh, neurological characteristics of all family members. And um, obviously by embracing neurodiversity, um, we try to kind of like improve and foster understanding, acceptance and resilience within the family system. So uh, then we can promote the well-being and growth of neurodivergent individuals and their families. 
I also want to highlight some common mistakes uh, within the context of neurodiversity and family therapy. Uh, these are the things that I've learned through my personal professional experience and working with trainees and supervisees. So um, as we talked about it, we just talked about it, the concept of neurodiversity in family therapy is really important and valuable, right? So it's also very important to recognize uh, that misunderstandings or mistakes can happen. So uh, I want to talk about some common mistakes um, so you can be cautious about um, incorporating neurodiversity into your work as a therapist. The first one is ignoring individual needs. So one mistake is assuming that all neurodivergent individuals have the same needs or expectations or experiences. Um, it's really important to recognize the uniqueness of each individual and their specific strengths, challenges, and preferences. So avoid making assumptions and ensure that therapy plans are tailored to meet the individual's needs. The second one is uh, overlooking uh, co-occurring conditions. Uh, so neurodivergent individuals may have co-occurring conditions or, um, you know, com comorbid, um, kind of like comorbidities um, that require attention and support. So it's really important to be aware of the potential presence of other conditions such as anxiety, depression, um, sensory process issues, processing issues, um, and, you know, address them uh, alongside the neurodivergent traits. The third one is underestimating uh, family impact. So um, this is really about couple and family therapy, right? This systemic perspective. So while focusing on the needs of the neurodivergent individual, it's really crucial not to overlook the impact on other family members. Um, neurodiversity in family therapy should consider the experiences, emotions, and support um, support kind of like needs of the, all family members, including siblings, parents, um, you know, people who live together. Um, generally, like the system, right? So to foster understanding and cohesion within the family system. Uh, next possible mistake is lack of cultural sensitivity uh, or humility. So um, neurodiversity should be understood and addressed within a cultural context, right? So recognizing that, that cultural beliefs, uh, practices, and values may influence um, how families perceive and approach neurodivergent traits, right? So be culturally sensitive, humble, you know, asking questions, adaptable, and considering the intersection of culture and neurodiversity in family therapy. Um, and also, you know, like the, the belief system that a family has. Sometimes, again, like um, illness, recovery, health, um, all these different things, um, and including like the spectrum of like that spectrum that we put neurodiversity on it. All these different things happen and we are some part, um, you know, somewhere on that spectrum. And some families, some cultures, again, like consider that as a test of life, test of God, you know. Uh, there's meaning behind this. There's meaning behind, you know, uh, having a different life. Um, you know, so again, like being curious, asking questions, and uh, not assuming that what you only what you believe is correct. You know, other perspectives could be um, right as well. Next one, uh, next mistake, common mistake that. Uh, sometimes happens is neglecting practical support. So while celebrating neurodivergent traits and promoting acceptance, uh, it's really important not to overlook the practical support that may be necessary. So in addition to emotional support, uh, neurodivergent individuals and their families may benefit from assistance while accessing services, accommodations, uh, therapies, community resources, all these different things that can enhance their well-being. Uh, the next common uh, mistake, again, like in my personal professional experience, is disregarding autonomy and self-determination. So uh, it's really important to involve neurodivergent individuals in decision-making uh, process and honor their autonomy and self-determination. So uh, basically, we should avoid assuming what is best for them without their input and actively involve them in therapy goals uh, and treatment plans and choices related to their own lives. And uh, I've seen this a few times with uh, the supervisees um, that I uh, work with, and um, it led us to an interesting conversation about their biases and beliefs and um, who they are and how they are present uh, in a session with uh, you know, those clients. 
And the uh, next one is neglecting corporate, um, the next mistake, potential, potential um, you know, possible uh, mistake is neglecting collaboration with uh, neurodivergent communities. So engaging with neurodivergent communities and organizations uh, can provide valuable insights and perspective. Um, you know, collaborate with uh, these communities. Um, we can do that, and we can, you know, um, um, have a better understanding um, about the needs and experience of neurodivergent individuals. And we can also incorporate their voices into uh, therapy approaches and practices. So again, like. By being aware of these potential mistakes and actively working to avoid them um, and, you know, having conversations about them, um, we as therapists can ensure, I know, just uh, try that um, our practice of um, neurodiversity in family therapy is sensitive, inclusive and effective um, in terms of supporting the well-being and growth of neurodivergent individuals and their families. So now that you listened and you, you know, watched this slide, maybe you can pause and think about what are some of the other mistakes that come to mind or some of the things that may seem challenging to you as a therapist. I repeat this every time just because I think it's really important in case um, you have missed this um, in previous lectures. Um, Lectures at a gradual level are not meant to be a redundant kind of like process of what you have in the textbook or materials for the week or for that course. Um, instead, lectures are here to um, maybe provide a different perspective or highlight some of the things or um, you know share some personal and professional experiences. And it's really like uh, from my perspective, at least uh, at a gradual level, it's an opportunity for all of us to learn uh, and to digest and to see how you can apply what you have read in the book um, and what you have read in the articles. Because of that, again, like we have case studies here and uh, here is the case study that you have for this week. And uh, if you hear my dogs barking, I apologize for that. Uh, but this is the case study for this week. Uh, please read it. And um, here are some potential issues or complaints that, you know, they come to you as a family. And uh, in the next slide, I have some questions that you can reflect on. And then the slide after that, basically not, not the answer, uh, because I don't think there's the answer, but there's a way of thinking about some potential goals uh, with this family. Uh, but I would recommend not uh, look at that slide um, first and uh, just, you know, have 5, 10, 15, 30 minutes, uh, whatever you need, and think about the case study, maybe write it down, the, the kind of like things that are important to you, the things that seem challenging, uh, the kind of treatment plan or goals that you may have with this family. Of course, I'd be try to, you know, collaborate uh, about the goals with, with the family, not that we set up an agenda for them, but imagine like that you're having that conversation with them. What are some of the things that you have in mind in terms of uh, potential goals for this family? So again, like think about it, you know, reflect. And then if you have any questions, uh, I'm here. The TA of the class is here. So please feel free to email us and use the discussion boards to um, ask your questions or share your reflections. You can also use the comment section of, you know, where the video is uploaded, uh, uploaded uh, which is usually on, on YouTube. So, yeah, there are all these different ways to keep it interactive and uh, you are the driver of your educational journey. So um, learn it the way that it want, you want it to be learned. Thank you.